through the special funds that are set up for to give discounts, abortion discounts to minority women that walk in, called Women in Need or Justice Funds. It goes to the fact that parental consent or notification laws in states where these policies do exist, not in California but other states, are totally skirted, are basically not followed by abortion clinics. They take cash money from an older sex predator boyfriend and let the young, the younger girl get that secret abortion. It goes to the fact that these abortion, these Planned Parenthood sex educators are often in our schools teaching children as young as kindergartners about what they think the human person's sexuality truly means and what it is. It extends to all the way to Capitol Hill where they're arguing every day and lobbying every day for more protections and more money for these abortionists and for these clinics and for their agenda and for the lie, the ultimate fundamental lie about human dignity and about the value of every human person. All of these crimes we continue to focus on and as we do our organization Live Action, we want to continue to grow not only what we're fighting against and doing these expose videos and doing this social media movement and getting breaking traditional news media walls down. Recently CNN did a documentary and covered our work which was remarkable. They hadn't touched our investigative work for years and then they did, they broke down and did, doc, did a documentary. So even the mainstream is starting to recognize these abuses, this illicit activity and start to cover, cover it. So the more the mainstream that we get and the more that we do this investigative work and we have no plans of stopping and I'm going to share in a moment some of those future plans but we're also fighting for something after all what a more wonderful thing what a more glorious thing to fight for than the value of the human person than our fellow human beings what a more beautiful gift we've been given than this great opportunity to stand up and proclaim the value of our fellow brothers and sisters, of our unborn brothers and sisters, and to fight to protect motherhood and fatherhood, and to fight and to bring healing for lost motherhood or broken motherhood and broken fatherhood. We've been given a great opportunity as well as a great responsibility. And my generation, I have never known, we have never known America with Without abortion. Before I was even born, Supreme Court Justice banned a lot of the Constitution. And it's many of you in this room, like my grandmother and like my mother, who have been fighting in this cause before I was even born and who have prayed and worked hard. But I believe with my whole heart that my generation will develop the strategy and will work with the vision that we've been given on the shoulders of many of you here today to end this once and for all. We don't just want to fight abortion. We just don't want to fight the culture of death. But we want to end abortion and build the culture of life, secure the culture of life in our nation. And I believe with my whole heart we will be successful by the grace of an all-powerful and all-loving Father. But we have to do it. So briefly, some of our plans that I'm very excited to share with you. We're a nonprofit organization. We started up when I was in college. I'm now graduated and working full time to do these, these programs. But basically, our strategy is twofold. And there are many great pro-life organizations out there doing fantastic work. But we really believe both in the power of literally making it impossible for abortion clinics to operate and for minimizing or ending the influence of abortion pro-abortion organizations like Planned Parenthood and NARAL, the national abortion leagues that are in our country. We want to not only go and make it hard for clinics to operate by going on the legal bounds, so showing illegal activity, getting prosecution in order, getting defunding done. After we've re released undercover videos, we've had legislators vote to defund abortion clinics. We've had abortion clinics put on probation. We've caused internal havoc in the organization. We've had managers, directors, we've had employees fired or suspended. We believe that this sort of investigative work has such great power in demanding accountability to really shut down abortion clinics, to make it hard for them to operate in our communities. So that's part of our strategy and we've worked with legal teams and we've worked with, we're actually getting, working on getting our PI uh, certificate right now, a private investigator certificate, which is a fun little thing, but I mean, hey, we're going to be experts at this, working on really developing that solid strategy because it's possible to make it impossible for these clinics to operate in our communities. So there's that aspect of our mission as an organization. 
and we've seen a lot of success already in the past four years and we're developing now the full-time program to see huge successes in the near future. The other aspect of our organization is in really harnessing and leading the youth of this country and adults but with a particular target on our youth, our high school, our college, our young adults, to be warriors in their communities, on their campuses for life. And there's an incredible thing happening in our country today. The majority of Americans consider themselves pro-life, the latest polls say, and the big part the big movement in that number, in that demographic, is young people. People in their teens and their 20s that are more than ever pro-life than ever before. It's a very exciting time. So tapping into this, using social media technology that we're working on developing, get, harnessing this power, organizing these young people to be forces for life on their campuses and in their communities. An example of one of our projects is our national pro-life magazine by students for students, the only one of its kind. It's called The Advocate. You can grab a copy on our table, but basically our circulation is now at 100,000. We're on over 150 college and high school campuses, and we get requests that we can't even fill right now because so many people want to be distributors and want to share this powerful pro-life media with a lot of emphasis on the visual with their fellow students. We've had students tell us, after seeing your magazine, before your magazine I was pro-choice, but after seeing this magazine, now I'm pro-life. I need to be pro-life. Amazing conversions because young people are hungry for the truth and they don't want to be part of the culture of death. They don't want to support something that's anti-human, that's anti-life. And so we see wonderful, wonderful strides making to make this, this generation more pro-life and organizing them and harnessing their energy to, to, towards specific strategic ends so that they can be powers for good in their communities politically, but then also powers for good on their campuses and helping their fellow students see the truth about life. So this is, in a nutshell, our mission. And I'm excited to tell you today that recently a very generous program was offered to us by a foundation to launch specifically our research department, which is our investigative department, um, full-time. This means we'll have a full-time staff and we'll be able to do three major investigations alone next year, in just one year. And they offered a matching grant program. The budget for that department would be $250,000. They offered $125,000, half of it if we can raise $125,000. So now my job has been running around trying to get people to you know, join us and help make this happen. Because because next year, if we can do these three major national investigations, we can help literally defund more clinics, shut down more clinics, stop more abortions, and get, more, most importantly, I believe, get the word out in the media to young people, through social media, through YouTube. Our YouTube's at over a million views. The truth about what's happening, what abortion really does, not only to that unborn child, but to the people involved, to that women, to communities, to families. So this is the vision. I'm very excited for what the next few years will bring. I'm so thankful for all of the hard work of many people here who have already who've been involved in this work maybe even before I was born although none of you I'm sure are that old but you know but I've just been involved for a long time and working very hard thank you thank you so much for being a part of this movement we have so much successes that I believe we will see in the near future and there's so many there's so many there's so much encouragement that we should gain from this last election cycle very exciting but there's more successes to be had soon thank you so much and thank you for being part of this incredible movement for the hu human dignity and for human life with me. God bless you. Thank you. Does anybody have a question for this young lady? <laughs> yeah. Distinct, unique individual. Mm -hmm. The mother cannot be even cloned from, from the baby. Mm -hmm. the, yes. The, the woman could be cloned even for urine, for her urine, from the urine. Yes. Not, not from the baby. So the baby is a, a distinct, okay? It's not a parent, it's not a twin. Right. 
That's an excellent point, sir. I mean, part of one of the great messages and one of the educational videos that we have online and we're working on developing more for young people especially is what about those questions like, well, isn't the unborn child just a part of the mother? Isn't it really not a human being? Or isn't it a parasite? There are a lot of arguments in the pro-life debate about why abortion might be okay. So one of the things that we do, live action, is we do a lot of educational pro 